Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. We're going to go through all the questions I can find IGCSE wise on sets and Venn diagrams with a little sprinkling of probability in there as well. So if you really find this intersection, union and working with three circles in the Venn diagram difficult, then this is the video for you. Right, let's get started. And I'll really break this down to make this as easy as possible for you. So we have a Venn diagram here, and it shows the number of students in a class of 40, always good to know exactly what the total is, who study physics, mathematics, and geography. And our first step here is we need to use set notation, so the notation like down here, for example, to describe the shaded region. Now, at the moment, it's quite hard to identify exactly what that will be. So what I like to try and do here is break it down into things that I do know. So if I do a mini sketch of what we have here, so I'm going to put this in a box and we have our three circles, one for physics, one for maths and one for geography. Let's identify a set that's easier to recognize. So what I'm going to focus on here is the geography and maths specifically. And if I shade in this part here, so let me do this in green. If I shade in this part, it's basically the two circles of geography and mathematics, including the intersection in between. Hopefully you recognize this from more basic calculations. So say I did this one here, for example, and did the same idea and just shaded in all the circles, including the center. This is what we call the union. So if I had this problem, let's use the same letters, maths and geography. Hopefully you can identify that this would be M union G. Uh, some teachers will use the word or to represent this as well. So mathematics or geography. Now notice this is not the problem that we have here. We actually have this part where the two is, the nine and the three, that's not been shaded in. So is there any way we can actually adapt what we've done here to get the answer that we want? Well, notice if you take these sections that are not shaded in, these sections are all in P. So if we can add in the idea of removing the P, then we get the um part of the Venn diagram that we want. Now remember, in order to state not P, we need to use this notation. So I'll write it down here, not P, that would be P dash, like so. So what we want to do here in order to use the set notation correctly is combine these things together. So first of all, we want to start with M or G. So we're gonna have M or G here. And now we need to include the idea of not having P as well. So this P dash. Now, the part where students really do struggle with is what symbol should I put in here? Do I want the overlap between the two or do I want to put those two sets together? Now, this is where we have to be careful. We want the overlap here. So we actually want to use the intersection sign because if we use the union side, that would also include the outside of the Venn diagram as well. So if I write down the alternative you might have thought about at home, so M or G, union not P. Well, let's think about this. This is either M or, M or G, so this part here, or anything not P. Now, anything not P also includes the outside as well, which again, in this diagram, we don't have shaded in. So this is why we chose the intersection here. We want the overlap between not P and M or G. And the overlap between those are the sections that we're looking for here. Now, if you found that concept quite difficult, I'm going to go through loads of questions in this particular video. So by the end of the video, this will become an easier concept to understand. Now, the next part, notice we've got an N in front here. This is important to realize. So we're actually looking for the number of elements. So the number of people in this case. So when we do work this out, we're going to add all the numbers together. So just a quick note what that means here. So if we read this through, so I, what I'd like to do here is write this out in normal English. This is P and G, P and G, because we've got the intersection here. And then or not M. So I always like to try and write this out in words before then we actually get into the problem. Now, if we actually look at this, we have P 
and G. So what part represents P and G here? Well, it's the intersection between the physics and geography circles. So what I'm drawing in here, like so. So 9 and 3. So we can have that or anything not in M. Well, what is not in M here? So we have this is not in M, the 4, and the 6 is also not in M as well. So notice the 2 and the 5 and 11 all are in M, so we can't include those. So the numbers we need to add together are the numbers in PNG. Notice because this is in PNG, even though this 9 is in M, uh, we're using OR here, so we're adding the two sets together. We're not finding the intersection of them. Uh, a big mistake students make here is they forget about the 9 in the middle. So all we need to do here is add these numbers together. So 9 plus 3, so that's the first part and then add together the four and six. If we add those numbers together, we get to our answer of 22, like so. And then very, very common on any IGCSE question with sets and Venn diagrams, they usually follow this up with some probability. So a student is chosen at random from those studying geography. So if we go back to our Venn diagram, how many people are studying geography? We have 6 plus 3 is 8, plus 9 is 17, plus 5 is 22. So worth writing this down, 22 study geography. And now we need to work out the probability that this student also studies physics or maths, but very critically, not both. So let's look at the geography circle. Which students study physics or maths but not both subjects. Well, that's going to be the three here. So just the physics, but not maths. And then the five here, studying just maths, but not physics. So these numbers add together, five plus three, that gives us eight. So that's gonna be our first part here. I'm gonna write down eight. And how many students are studying geography? Uh, I've got 22 here. Have I counted this correctly? No, I haven't. This is why you should always check these things. So you get nine plus three is 12, plus five is 17, plus six is 23. So notice I'm always checking as I'm going through to stop any of those little silly errors that can creep in. So we have eight students that are studying physics or maths, but not both out of 23 in total. So that's going to be our answer, eight out of 23. Again, you can check the mark scheme here. Again, just identifying 8 or 23 gives you the method mark here, and then putting it together as a fraction or a decimal equivalent will then give you the next mark. Right, on to our next question. So this comes from a paper two. As you can see, it's usually one of these more straightforward one, two mark questions. And what we need to find here is the following. So the number of elements, remember that N here stands for number of elements. By the end of the video, you'll get used to all this notation. And again, I like to write this out in words before then we look at it. So what this means is A and B, remember we've got the intersection here, this intersection symbol, but we have the dash outside, so I like to write but not that. Now you see that sentence and you go, right, how do I break this down to something that's easy to understand? Well, let's have a think about this. So I want A and B first of all. So if I draw a sketch of A and B and what that would look like, this is how I do it, always break it down into its components, into its parts. If we're doing A and B, so this is A and B I'm looking at here, it's just gonna be the intersection in the middle. So this part here, right in the middle. So if I want to do, uh, let's put this in red, not A and B, there's gonna be everything else in our Venn diagram. So I shade this in green. So it's gonna be this part here, this part here, and critically, do not forget the outside as well. Again, you're not gonna get that mark if you don't include the outside value, which we have in this particular question. So what do we actually need to add together here? Well, we want everything not in the middle. So that's 25, that's the 12, and don't forget the three outside. This time, I have more success in adding these together. So if we add together 25 plus 12, that's 37, plus three, that then gives us 40. Again, this is a one mark question, so you just have to write down 40, and you'll get that mark. Right, so you can check the mark scheme there and 
<laughs> there's not really much to check there. Um, whilst um, you're watching the video, if you have a particular topic that you really, really want to go through, then please do let me know down in the comments below. A lot of these videos have actually come out from your suggestions. So whether that's doing the hardest IGCC questions I can find, all of IGCC statistics, all of IGCC transformations. So your ideas are really critical for the future content I'm gonna bring out to you. So again, please do mention that in the comments below. Right, on to a more meaty paper four question here. So we've got question eight. Use set notation, so there's always that indication when to use set notation to describe the shaded region in the Venn diagram. This is a fairly straightforward question here because we've got that intersection in the middle and remember from what we've done before, this is written set notation as A intersection B. Again, I often write this as A and B, but we want this in set notation, so we just write A intersection B, like so. And what's typical, particularly on the extended paper here, is shading the correct region in each Venn diagram. This is a very, very standard skill you need to get good at to answer these kind of questions. So the first one here is Q, or not P. So again, I like to write this out in words, Q or not P. Now, one way of approaching this kind of question, again, I'm going through this really carefully, I know students struggle with this, is actually draw out the two situations where these sets are involved. So I'm gonna do two separate Venn diagrams here, one Venn diagram there, and then one Venn diagram down below. So this is Q, uh, Let's get right way around. So this is P, this is Q, this is P, this is Q. I'm going to write down these two sets separately. Now Q, I think, is actually fairly straightforward. All we do is shade in everything that's Q. So we shade in this part here and this part here. And then we want to shade in not P. So everything not P. Well, this is P, so everything not. So this and the outside as well. So everything that's not P here. And then I'll write down the set notation underneath. So not P. And what we want here is either in Q or not P. So what does that look like? We're combining the two sets together. Okay, so we're going to first of all shade in Q. So we shade in the Q part like so and now we need to shade everything not p so notice we've already shaded in this part already so we don't need to shade that in uh, but we do need to shade out the outside that's the only thing we haven't done with this so with an or you have to be a little bit more careful because you also want to shade in the outside of this as well so that's our final answer here for the one mark on shade in the whole of q because that comes from the first part, and then we want to shade in everything that's not P. Again, we've already shaded in this part, so we don't need to shade it again, so to speak, but we do need to shade in the outside to get that mark. Again, we approach this in a very similar way as well. So notice I'm gonna write this out in words, and I really recommend you do this in the exam. So we have K or L in brackets and not M. Okay, this is very typical for the harder kind of questions, K or L, and then not M. So this and is going to make a big difference when we do the last part. Now again, I would do two Venn diagrams, just separating out the two things. So I'm going to do two Venn diagrams down here. If you find this a little bit slow, that's absolutely fine. You can move on to the next question. But if you're really not sure about Venn diagrams, I do recommend you watching this part and make sure you get really happy with what I'm doing. So I'm going to label this the same way. So you've got K, L, M. We're going to do not M down here. And then we're going to do K or L up here. So we've got K, L, M. And what I'm going to do is just shade in these separately. So K or L, anything in K, anything in L. So we're going to shade in this part here. So anything K or L, I'm going to shade in everything not M. So what is not in M here? Well, anything not in this circle, including the outside. So 
that and then the outside is also not in L as well. Now what makes this different to the previous question is we're looking for the and in between, the intersection, the overlap. So essentially the question what we're asking here is what do these two things have in common? Well the only areas in common, let's get another color out here, let's get the gold out. What do these two things have in common? Well this section are both shaded in and this little tiny section up here is shaded in and this section is shaded in. So those are the only things that are in common with these two Venn diagrams I've done. Now how do I know to find the what's in common? Well it's this and in the middle, it's really really important. So I'm only going to shade in what I've shaded in gold. So we've got the top part here, you need to be very careful when you're shading this, clear to examiner exactly what regions. We want this part and then we want this part as well. Okay, so as soon as you get these intersections, just be a little bit more careful with your shading to make sure you then get to the right answer. So, on to the question down below. Again, very typical to get some probability at the same time. So we have the word Venn diagram, very suitable, and it shows 11 cards. One of these is chosen at random. Write down the probability the letter on the card is not A. So how many A's do we have? We've got one here, one here. How many are not A? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine not A out of 11 cards in total. So we just write down for our one mark, nine out of 11. And now we're going to a slightly more tricky question here. So a card is chosen at random from these 11 cards, not cards, but cards, and then replaced, so that's important. A second card is then chosen at random. Find the probability that exactly one card has the letter N. So the way I would set this up is actually do a tree diagram. If you want more work on probability, then do check out the video above. But the way I would do this is sort this into N and not N, and then N and not N. Again, we call this in, when we're talking about IB, in the binomial distribution, talking into a success or failure. That's how we describe it. So then I'm going to do my tree diagram. So the probability of getting N, how many N's do we have? One, two, just two. Okay, so we have two here out of 11. So not N, well, we can use that very similar to what we did in the question here. Um, I'm just double checking, we've only got two heads. Um, that'd be nine out of 11. Now notice the card is replaced, so these probabilities do not change. So it's gonna be two out of 11, and then nine out of 11, two out of 11, nine out of 11. So we want exactly one card here, has the letter N, so we need to work out the probability of N and not N, and then the probability of other way around, so not N, and then the N, because we want exactly one, and the way that we do this on a, a tree diagram is we multiply the fractions together. So going along the branches, we multiply. So I'm going to do 2 over 11 times 9 over 11 and work out the answer 18 over 121. Just times in top, times in bottom. And then we do the same here. Now notice it's actually the same calculation, just the other way around. So that gives us then 18 over 121. And now we want to do essentially probability of n not n or the probability of not n n. So we take the two fractions we've just done here and we add those together. So if we add together 18 out of 121 plus 18 out of 121, this is why I did not simplify any fractions. If I could, then you can add these really easily, giving you just 36 out of 121 which we're going to write in. You should always check in case it simplifies. Generally, my experience with IGCSE questions, they're not too worried about simplification at the end with probability questions in particular. Right, um, we'll go on to the last part. This is a big, long question, this one. It's really testing your knowledge of probability and then diagrams. So 50 students are asked if they like English or like maths. Three say they do not like English and do not like maths. So that's going to go outside. That's not going to be involved in the two circles we have. Now, we have to be very, very careful is this idea. 33 say they like English, 42 say they like maths. What we don't know here is how many like both. 
So we haven't actually got what the middle is. Now the way to generally do this kind of problem is we don't know what the middle is, so let's just call it x. For the moment, we'll rub this out later on when we work out what it is. And therefore, this one here must be 33, because that's what it all adds up to, minus the intersection. So notice, if I take this circle on its own, so let me just do this to see the idea here. If I add that circle together, so E, that's just going to be 33 minus X plus X. The X's cancel, and I get 33. So that circle, regardless of what X is, will always add up to 33, which is what we wanted. And you can do exactly the same trick on the other side with mathematics. So what you can do here is then just call this, well, this is going to be 42 minus X. Now you're thinking, how does this actually help you work out what X is? Well, we know there are 50 students in total. Now, three of which are outside. So that leaves all these circles adding up to 47. So all we need to do here is a little bit of algebra. If we add together 33 minus X plus X minus X plus 42, this all needs to add up to 47. Notice not 50 because we have three that do not like English and do not like maths. This is just an equation to solve here. So we've got a plus X and a minus X of so these cancel. 33 plus 42, that's equal to 75. We get 75 minus X is equal to 47. Get a little bit of equation solving at this point. Uh, what I'm going to do is add X on both sides. So if I add X on both sides, this cancels. We get 75 equals 47 plus X. And now all we need to do to get x on its own, what's the opposite of adding 47? Well, subtracting 47 from both sides. This cancels, good, we get x, that's exactly what we're looking for. And then we do 47 minus 75, and that will give you then 28. Again, always double check, and again, this is a calculator question anyway. So we actually know this number in the middle is going to be 28. So I can just substitute this back in. So this is going to be then 28, like so. And if this is 28, well, this is going to be 33 minus 28. That's going to give me 5, like so. And then we're going to do 42 minus 28. And that, I'll just rub this out, gives me 14. Now, if you've done this in the exam, and this is the answer that you got, you can always double check to see if you got the right answer. So 28 plus 5 is 33. That works. 28 plus 14, that's 42. That works as well. So we can guarantee that we've actually got all two marks for that question. And now, typical probability part after this. So a student is chosen at random. And now we need to find the probability that this student likes English and likes mathematics as well. Now notice we are looking for a probability, so we need to write it as a fraction or a decimal. Well, how many like English and maths? Well, that's 28, what we just worked out. And how many students in total? Well, 50, so just 28 out of 50, just like that. Now at this point, we've got a little bit of a trickier question here. So two students are chosen at random and find the probability they both like mathematics. So how many students do we have here that like mathematics? Well, 28 plus 14, that's 42. So the probability of one student liking mathematics is 42 over 50. And this is where the reading of the question becomes really, really important. We're choosing two students at random. There is no replacement here. So I'm going to write that in words. No replacement. So if we choose another student, what's the probability that they like mathematics? Well, now we've got 41 students because we've already chosen one. And then out of how many students are we left with? Well, 49. And remember, this is the idea of maths and maths. So what we're going to do with the two fractions here, we're going to multiply them together. So this is where you can pop this into your calculator. I've got my very handy calculator here. So we do 42 over 50 times 41 divided by 49. Again, we're going to simplify a fraction down. Calculator is kind of good here, does it for you. And then it gives us 123 
over 175. So do use the power of your calculator to avoid any of the simplifying issues. The calculator, because this is a paper four question here, does do it for you. So make sure you use that to its full extent. And you thought this question was finished, but it wasn't. There is one part left, and this is slightly trickier. So two students who like English, that's really important. So how many students like English here? Well, 33, so we have 33 students. And it's gonna work in a very similar way here. And now we want to find the probability they both also like maths. So out of those 33 students, how many also like maths? Well, 28 of them, that's good. I like English and maths, so that makes lots of sense. And again, this is a similar situation to liking maths and maths. So we do this in a very similar way. So if we choose another student, that's going to be 27. And then out of how many in total? Well, it's 32. And again, we're going to multiply for the same reason that we did here, maths and maths. And again, this is where you let your calculator do the talking here. So I'm going to pop this in. So 28 over 33 times 27 over 32. And then we get to our final answer of 63 over 88. Notice I'm showing enough working here to get all two marks. But I'm not writing an essay. I leave that to the students that like English. I'm just writing enough here just to make sure I get all two marks for that question. Okay, so that was a very long paper four star question, but it's a really good test of your knowledge here. So we've got some set notation, we've got some probability, we've got some actually making a Venn diagram as well. So I think it's a really nice question to have in this particular video to make sure that you're really happy with this particular topic. And now on to a paper two question. So in this Venn diagram, we need to shade the given regions. So in this case, let's write this out in words. This is going to be not A or not B. This is trickier than it looks. And again, I'm gonna go back to the model that I've shown you throughout this video to make sure you don't make the critical mistake here. So. If, again, if you think you've got the answer already, then you can move on, of course, and check the answers. But I'm going to go through this carefully. So, again, I'm going to draw two Venn diagrams for the two different sets that I have. And if you do this in the exam, it takes you a minute, but it could be the minute that gets you that mark or not. So it's worth doing if you find this difficult. So we get A and B. I'm going to write in the two sets, not A and not B. So let's shade that in. Let's think, what's everything not A? So it's gonna be here and then everything outside, like so. And then not B, well, everything not in this circle, so it's gonna be this part and then everything outside, like so. Okay, and because we've got an or here, we need to add these two sets together. So we just put them together. So we need shade in everything that's in both. So first we've got this part of the circle and this part of the circle. So we shade in this part and this part. And they both have the outside as well. So we need to shade in the outside. Notice here, and this is the biggest mistake that's made on this kind of question, that the middle is not shaded in. So this is where students often don't get that mark by shading in the middle as well, thinking, ah, not A or not B, that must just must be everything shaded in. That's not true. Remember, the bit in the middle stays unshaded. And we can approach question 19 also in a similar way here. Again, we're gonna write this out in words so we know exactly what kind of problem we're looking at here. So if we write this out, we get C or D in brackets, and then and not E. Now, actually, if you've been paying attention during this video, you've seen a question like this. Let me go back. So if we go back to this question here, we've seen K or L and not M. So if I fast forward to this point, it's exactly the same question. So if you're not sure about how to get the answer here, I'm just going to give you the answer straight away. So it's this part, this part and this part together. 
So just shading in there. And if you're not sure where that came from, this is a good chance to actually go through the process I did in that previous question and then check you actually get the answer I put in front of you as well. Right, and you can of course check the mark scheme there too to make sure you're happy with it. Okay, on to question 14. So we're gonna complete the statement here of this particular Venn diagram we have in front of us. So remember, this here means P or Q. So if I was to actually shade this in as a Venn diagram question, I'll be shading in everything in the circles, including the intersection. So I'll be shading in this part here. However, this actually wants us to write down the set. So it actually wants us to write down what is in that red area there. So we actually need to write in the elements here of B, C, D, E, F, and G. So they can change the kind of questions here by actually looking at what you're doing in terms of actually putting in the elements. Right, on to question B. So we need to now find NQ. Again, very important here to know the notation. The N here is the number of elements. So that's really important. This is a big mistake that's often made on these questions. So we know what Q is here. We've done a lot of practice in this video. We know Q is equal to this circle here, but they don't want you to write down D, E, F, and G here. They just want you to write down how many elements are there, the number of them. So one, two, three, four. So we just write down four, just like so. And for part C here, again, we want the number of elements. And so notice we've got that N in front. So we do have to watch out for that. And then we are doing this part here. So this, if we translate it into words, it's going to be not P and Q. So we've seen this kind of situation before, not P and Q. Again, I'm gonna still write this out separately just in case you're finding this tricky. Again, of course you can fast forward through this as well. So again, I'm gonna do two examples on the side. Again, this video is for people that really do struggle with this idea of sets. So that's why I am going through lots of examples here in this particular video. So we've got P and Q here, we've got P and Q. And we've got two sets here. We've got not P and we've got Q. So let's just shade these in. So what does not P look like? Well, that's gonna be everything not in that circle. So we shade in this part. Don't forget you also shade in the outside because that is not in P. Okay, how about Q? Well, we just shade in the circle Q and nothing else. And remember, we are looking for the and in between. This is really important. So in other words, we're looking for the overlap between the two sets. Well, in this case, the only overlap, the only thing they have in common here is this yellow that I'm shading in. Notice I have that in both of my sets. Transferring that across to what I have here. Well, that's gonna be this part of my Venn diagram. So not including D here, that's really important. So just these three elements, E, F, and G. Now, I don't want to write down E, F, and G here. I just want the number of elements here. So that's just equal to three. So let's pop that in, three like so. And you can see this in the mark scheme. So we've got four, three, and then B, C, D, E, F, G, like so. Okay, and on to question six here. So on the Venn diagram, we need to shade in A or B. Now I tried to trick you here slightly because usually there's an intersection in the middle. If there is no intersection here, we just shade in the actual circles themselves. So if there was an intersection, we shade it in, but these two things are separate in this case. They don't depend on one another. So therefore we just shade in A and B. Don't let this kind of question fool you or trick you. So that's the mark scheme there. Okay, and on to our very last question for this video. So 30 students are asked if they like maths or they like English, and we're given the Venn diagram like so. Always double check, they do add up to 30. So we've got 17 plus seven, 24 plus five, 29, plus one is equal to 30. And again, we've got that sneaky N here, always watch out for it. So we're looking for the number of elements. 
Again, not so important in this question, we're just gonna take the number that's in here. So we have this statement here. This is M or, and this is very important here, M or not E. So I've gone through a few questions like this. Have a little think about it and see if you can get to the answer. Now our answer here is actually 25. Because if I was to shade this in, this is where the or is critical rather than and. I would shade this part in. But I would also shade in this part and the outside as well. So all those three parts make up M or not <coughs> E. So I have M or anything not in E, which is also the outside too. So I add those together. If you're not sure about that, I've gone through a couple of questions like it, so check that out earlier in the video. And now we're gonna have a look at a typical probability question here. So two students are chosen at random. Again, there's no replacement. That we're not given the question that is replaced. And we need to find the probability that they both like mathematics, but not English. Right, so we need to think about what part of our Venn diagram that's gonna be. They like mathematics, but not English. That's gonna be represented by the seven here. So, probability of choosing one person that likes maths, but not English. I don't know who that could be out there. That's going to be seven out of, well, how many students? Well, we have 30. And then we need to think, I want to choose another student. So I'm left with only six students here that like maths, but not English. How many students in total? Well, that's going to be equal to 29. And again, we just pop that into our calculator. There's no need to do this manually. So we do seven over 30, and we times that by six over 29. Give us the answer if we simplify it as 7 over 100 and 145. Again, you could always multiply this and just leave the answer as is. But I'm going to put in my answer of 7 over 145, just like that. And you can check the answer here. Notice the answer is different, but what my calculator has done automatically here is divided top and bottom by 6 given me 7 over 145. Notice on this mark scheme, it has OE here. This means or equivalent, so as long as you put that fraction down or a fraction that's the same as that, then you will get all three marks. Notice I've got the two method marks here for writing this calculation, which is important to have there as well. Now, if you want to check out the very hardest questions on the IGCSE course, so you want to find the very hardest questions in 2022, then please do check out the video in front of you and really test your mettle on those really hard ANA star questions.